Every drop of fresh water in these churning rapids contains countless trillions of individual H2O molecules. And floating among them are a handful of microscopic particles that play crucial roles in a navigational system that is truly a wonder of the living world. But how does it all work? Intriguing clues are now revealed in studies of the life cycle and biological machines that enable a Pacific salmon to complete a round-trip migration spanning thousands of miles with pinpoint accuracy. Five different species of salmon inhabit the northwestern United States and Canada. And for each, life begins in the shallow waters of a river or stream. A female can lay thousands of eggs, and after they are fertilized, they will incubate for several weeks while their embryos develop in the gravel beds. After hatching, they feed exclusively on the nutrients stored within their yolk sacs. The content of these pouches will sustain the small fish for two or three months. Then, after the yolk is consumed, long-term survival will require a more substantial food source. And for the juvenile salmon, born in countless rivers and streams, that means a dramatic change of address. In order to attain the physical maturity required to produce their next generation of offspring, they must relocate, often hundreds of miles, to the largest seafood buffet on the planet. As the young salmon enter the Pacific Ocean, they carry with them an imprinted code from their freshwater homes. And years later, they will use these chemical signals, stored securely in their memory banks, to identify the exact odor and location of their natal river or stream. Depending upon their species, they will often spend two to four years feeding on a bounty of marine life as they travel in counterclockwise loops that can extend halfway to Japan. Then, when their bodies and reproductive systems are fully developed, they instinctively head back to the coast. After reaching the mouth of the river that had carried them to the sea, the salmon's long dormant chemical map is immediately activated. And driven by their need to spawn, the mature fish follow a trail of odor molecules that will grow progressively stronger as they get closer to home. Then it starts moving up the river and it's like playing back what it had imprinted going down. It's pulling on that map, and then as it travels up the river, it's remembering, you know, going by this tributary and that tributary, and it has to, no doubt, pass through other tributaries that just don't have the exact smell that it's looking for. But it's zeroing in, eventually, on that exact tributary where it was hatched out of the gravel, where it started its life. The biological machines required to decode the river's chemistry are remarkable. The salmon constantly analyzes its route by testing the molecular composition and smell of the water that enters its nostrils. In nasal cavities on both sides of the fish's head, flanges of tissue form large olfactory organs. Each flange contains half a million tightly packed cells, many of which support cilia that extend into the water-like antennae. And the cilia are embedded with receptors, molecular machines that help identify specific chemicals in liquid. Odorant molecules with specific information about the environment continually flow through the nostrils and are detected by the cilia. What's going on is different streams are putting down different combinations of odorants. There's a lock and key kind of relationship between one kind of odorant and one kind of receptor. 
Each type of odorant has a distinctive shape and composition. If upon contact, the molecule fails to match a receptor's precise specifications, it is rejected. But if its structure is correct, the molecule fastens tightly. The shape has to be exactly right and the charge distribution has to be exactly right and then it fits in there like a glove. And that's when the signaling cascade begins. These connections trigger electrical impulses that instantly flow down the nerve cells and out of the cavity. The signals are relayed through a maze of wires attached to the olfactory bulb, a biological switchboard that processes a torrent of information about the salmon's environment. Inside the bulb, hundreds of receivers interpret and organize this data, then send it on to other areas in the brain that will compare it to the chemical map compiled years earlier when the juvenile sockeye first swam to the sea. They can probably detect one odorant molecule on the order of parts per billion, maybe parts per trillion. Who really knows? What we do know is what they're looking at is the overall signal. And if the signal fits with the memory perfectly, then the fish knows this is the river, that's the one I'm going to swim up. The system that salmon use as they head upstream seems almost impossibly accurate. Literally millions of them successfully make these journeys and successfully reproduce so that we see the whole cycle repeated over again. I'm awestruck by it. These responses of awe and wonder are not surprising, especially when you consider that in Oregon, Washington, Alaska, and British Columbia, Canada, thousands of rivers and tributary streams are the home waters for individual populations of Pacific salmon. And every spring and fall, against all odds, millions of these relentless fish successfully find their way back from the world's largest ocean to the same freshwater sanctuaries where they hatched years before. There, in optimal conditions, they give birth to a new generation. And with it, brilliant confirmation of an eternal truth. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. <laughs>